This morning, I'm starting work on an open JRPG combat system. I'm focusing on the combat system here because it's really the heart of RPG games. And I want to show you how to do turn-based combat with active time battle, things like character stats, maybe character progression, the combat UI, those kinds of things. If you're working on an RPG game, I would recommend to start with whatever is going to be the heart of your game, the mechanics that the players are going to spend the most time with. I'm not starting from zero. I actually have some experience with our open RPG. The thing is that the code is more complex than it could be. And so I'm going to try to make it simpler, more elegant and a bit better to teach. My first prototype is going to be the battlers automatically attacking one another. I want the ATB system to work, so the timeline with the portraits advancing, and as soon as they reach the end, the battlers instantly attack, which means I just need a few stats, something to represent the battlers, I'm starting by defining a few classes because I know that I will want to cross-reference them and this gives me the foundation of the combat system. I know that I want something to manage the turn order. I also want a list of battlers, characters that will participate in combat. So I'm starting by just writing these as empty templates. I started by making the turn queue calculate the position of each battler on the timeline, but it's clear now that I have to move that on the battlers to all make the code simpler. Around noon, I think I have the main logic okay-ish to get started with um, separation between the battler and the turn queue. There is code that relies on parts of the game that don't exist yet, like opening the combat menu and selecting an action. But this helps me to think about the system and how I'm going to arrange the code and how the parts are going to call into one another. But with that, I'm going to go make lunch and I'll see you in a moment. Some hours later, the system is working. We have active time battles. You'll see Robbie attack often because it has a speed rating that's pretty high. Also note I took some sprites from OpenRPG to save time and make the presentation nice. So I think next I'm gonna work on the interface just to know where to place the battlers on the field and to start to get a feel for the player's gameplay selecting the actions, even though it's going to be basic for now. It's nine at the moment. It's gonna be my last recording of today. For a change of mind, I did a bit of UI. I've been at the Kickstarter thing for a little while now, and at some points in the day, I get a bit tired. So this was refreshing. I've been playing with the position, the colors of the elements, you know, the size of the fonts. Well, I was thinking, you know, for the characters, they could be at the bottom like that, giving us a bit of space to place the battlers around the top. But around the top, I think we can move the combat area down, make it really big and spread the characters a bit and give it more perspective. Regarding the bar, I'm not sold yet on putting it at the top or at the bottom. I feel that at the top, it's a bit easier to read. And while I was designing all that, I was thinking about the gameplay as well. It's that instead of having some mana bar that you can use across combat, maybe we could use a charge system. You get these charges every turn and you can use them to spend on skills or on special abilities. So you get one per turn, but maybe you can skip your turn and get two. The idea is to give you some strategy there. And I guess that's it for now. I'm gonna start coding a bit, that menu, those kinds of things, putting things in the game. And I'll see you tomorrow or in a few seconds with the magic of editing. Next morning, with a few more hours of work, the turn bar is working. And that's how it looks for now. I think it's a bit too long. It puts a bit of strain on the eye in full screen. Getting closer to noon, I have the interface in place. Now it's mostly for testing, dial some boilerplate scripts, but it still needs some work, of course. The one I'm focusing on here is the action menu. I didn't know, but if you double click on some piece of UI, it opens its scene, which is pretty cool. This one already has most of the code ready. I need to connect it to the battle system. The way it works is through delegation and using a feature of the signals. For example, Robbie is going to have his commands. It's the array of actions here. And so the UI action menu, you're going to pass it the commands. 
In this node's setup function, it creates a list of buttons. I connect to the press signal on each of these buttons and I bind the action to that signal callback. So when the player presses the button, I don't have to store the action, it's bound to the signal callback for me. With a little more work, the menu now opens when it's the player's turn. I've decided to make this menu controlled and created by the active turn queue here. And if I go to the code in the play turn function of active turn queue, uh, now when the battler doesn't have an AI component, it means it's player controlled, in which case we instance the menu, add it as a child, open it, and we wait for the menu action to be selected by the player. But well, it's lunchtime, so I'm gonna go enjoy some nice food and the sound of the rain. With a bit of refactoring, the menu now works. You can already apply an action and it will just apply to all the enemies at the moment. You can also click. So naturally, Godot supports touch-based controls for free with its UI system. The elements you see here are buttons. These elements are in an HBox container. That's this node UI action list. So I can put multiple buttons and they will you know, show in a list. And the arrow, I'm actually keeping as a child of that. So it's easy to move it around and to control it from the list. Like when you press up and down. Because it's a sprite, it doesn't get affected by the VBox container. Okay, next up. I'm going to make uh, selecting the enemies and maybe some basic AI. The arrow is now working to select a target to attack. And um, I've added that wiggle animation, as you can see, it bounces a bit. This helps you, you know, spot which option you have selected a bit better. It's like the blinking cursor in your code editor it helps you spot the cursor. Now, the arrow itself that you use to select the enemies is not the same as the one on the menu because it needed a bit of custom logic to handle moving around and also this function find closest target. So it needed some code like vector math to know, for example, if I press down or if I press left from the porcupine at the top, it's going to go down to the one in the bottom left. Also, um, for the UI, I spawn it directly from the active turn queue. So we have the play turn function that plays the turn, who would have guessed? And this one has a loop. We need the player to choose an action and a target. Until the player does that, we keep looping over. And every time we create the action menu and we create the arrow in there directly from that node. So if I look at the tree while the game is running, I'm going to unfold the active turn queue. You'll see the UI action menu. I press enter and then it gets replaced by the select arrow. The select arrow just got created. I'm going to call it a wrap for this devlog. Of course, there is more to do and I will keep sharing on social networks. Uh, it's just that I've been a bit distracted today. We had an earthquake, uh, lots of noise. I invite you to check out the source code. It's MIT licensed. It's in the description. It's a work in progress, but you can find some good stuff in there, I hope. And please start a repository. While you're there, if you want to learn more, you can support our Kickstarter 2D Secrets, get the full course when it comes out, but also support the creation of more free software like this JRPG demo. You can read more on the Kickstarter page. Thank you kindly for watching, be creative, have fun, and let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.